Okay, so we've talked about subset selection methods, uh, ridge regression, and the lasso, and now we're moving on to the last class of method that we're going to talk about in this lecture, which is dimension reduction. And so if we remember in the subset selection methods, we were just taking a subset of the predictors and using least squares to fit the model. And then in ridge regression and the lasso, we were, we were really doing something different where we were taking all of the predictors, but we weren't using least squares. We were using a shrinkage approach to fit the model. And now we're going to do something different, which is we're going to use least squares, but we're not going to use least squares on the original predictors, x1 through xp. Instead, we're going to come up with new predictors, which are linear combinations of the original predictors, and we're going to use these new predictors to fit a linear model using least squares. So this is known as dimension reduction. And the reason it's called dimension reduction is because we're going to use those p original predictors to fit a model using m new predictors, Oops. where m is going to be less than p. So we're going to shrink the problem from one of p predictors to one of m predictors. So in a little bit of detail here, we're going to define m linear combinations, z1 through zm, where m is some number less than p. And these are going to be linear combinations of the original p predictors. So for instance, zm is going to be the sum of the p predictors, where each predictor is multiplied by phi mj, where phi mj is some constant. And in a minute, we'll talk about where this phi mj comes from. But the point is, once we get our new predictors, z1 through zm, we're just going to fit a linear regression model using least squares. But instead of using the x's, we're going to use the z's. So in this new least squares model, my predictors are going to be the z's. And my coefficients are going to be theta naught through theta m. And the idea is that if I can just be really clever in how I choose these linear combinations, in particular, if I'm clever about how I choose these phi mj's, then I can actually beat least squares that I would have gotten if I had just used the raw predictors. So um, one thing that we should notice is that you know on the previous slide here, we had this, this summation over theta m, z, i, m. And if we look at that a little bit more carefully and we plug in the definition of z, i, m, which, remember, was just a linear combination of the original x's. And we, we switch to the order of the sums and we do a little bit of algebra. We see that what we actually have here is a sum over the p predictors times this quantity times the pth predictor. So this is actually just a linear combination of the original x's, where the linear combination involves a beta j that's defined like this. So the point is that when I do this dimension reduction approach and I define these new z's that are linear combinations of the x's, I'm actually going to fit a linear model that's linear in the original x's. But the, linear the, the beta j's in my model need to take a very, very specific form. So, so these dimension reduction approaches, they're giving me models fit by least squares, but, but I'm fitting the model not on the original predictors. It's on a new set of predictors. And I can think of it actually as ultimately a linear model on the original predictors, but using different coefficients that kind of take this funny form here. So in a way, it's sort of similar to ridge and lasso, right? It's still least squares. It's still a, a linear model in all the variables, but there's a, there's a constraint on the coefficients. That's exactly right. right. But well, we're getting yeah. a constraint in a different way. We're not yeah. getting a constraint, like in the ridge case, by saying, OK, my sum of squared betas needs to be small. Instead, we're saying my betas need to take this really funny form, if you look at it. Hmm. But it's got a simple interpretation in terms of least squares on a new set of features. So and the, the idea here is really it boils down to the bias variance trade-off. By saying that my betas need to take this particular form, I can win. Um, I can get a model with low bias and also low variance relative to what I would have gotten if I had just done plain vanilla least squares on the original features. Um, one thing that I should mention is that this is only going to work nicely if m is less than p. And instead, if my m equaled p, then I would just end up with least squares. And this whole dimension reduction thing would have just given me least squares on the raw data 